This is the Worship Team Training Podcast with your host and training director, Brandon Dempsey. Worship Team Training provides live workshops and online resources to help inspire, create, and transform the leading of worship. Now, here's your host, Brandon Dempsey. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the Worship Team Training, Worship Team Training University Tuesday show. How are you today? we got great folks coming in right now, and we have our guest, Gabe Zamet, that's standing by. And we are happy that you guys are here. Terrific Tuesday. What is up? Let's go ahead and do this right. What's going on? Periscope, Facebook Live, if you would, please do us the honor and uh, swipe and invite. Let everybody know what is up, what's going on. Thanks so much, Mustang Sally. What's up? How are you? And we have great friends coming in right now on Facebook Live coming in, Periscope coming in. If you're watching uh, also by YouTube, thanks so much. And welcome to our new members watching us by Worship Team Training University and our closed circuit type uh camera shot right there for them so welcome you guys welcome members also we want to uh, do a shout out to our audio podcast people that are listening by itunes and by spreaker thanks so much for coming in today how are you guys doing what is going on how is your tuesday it's already tuesday and we got so much to cover we are talking about joy this week again but we're talking about it in a different way of how do we sing about joy so my name is brandon dempsey and i'm a follower of Jesus and also happened to lead a ministry called worshipteamtraining.com and also Worship Team Training University. We'll get to more of that in a second. We live broadcast just like this on Tuesdays at 11 a.m. and then we have a special broadcast for members of our university program on Thursdays at 11 and that's special more in-depth training. And by the way, you can't not miss the next guest that's coming up this Thursday. It's just going to rock your world. So before I get to that as well, we talk about worship. So what you'll find on this broadcast and many others, things that pertain to worship leading, of course, musicianship, vocals, tech, also senior pastors. What can I say? But we have a lot of great senior pastors that watch our program, and we thank you guys so much for coming in. All of our great friends from LinkedIn and Google as well. Instagram, thanks so much for coming in. A lot of great Instagram supporters over the past two weeks. You guys nailed it. Love y'all so much. We have our next freebie contest coming up this I hope this Friday. Okay. So be on the lookout. If you're following us on Instagram, it's worship team training. That's all I got to say. All right. So the news coming up this week that you cannot miss. And by the way, I'm putting up here our Snapchat. You got to make sure to follow us because we also will do some funny things. And plus you'll be seeing some more content when we do our snaps each day. And that could be with more tips about worship leading and so forth. And so find us right there. I'm putting out the link right now on uh, Twitter and also Facebook Live. And plus, I also want to remind you about our Worship Team Training Songwriting Contest. It's back. It's May the 26th. Don't miss it. If you have songs sitting on your shelf, get them off and get them heard because God wants you to sing them in your church as well. And this is just another way to do it. There's a lot of other contests out there, but we like ours and you should like it too because the grand prize winner is going to be a recipient of one of the brand new model microphones from Sure. Plus, we got gifts from Kaiser Capos and also Worship Musician Magazine. So the big, big news this coming Thursday on Worship Team Training University, we have none other than Crystal Lewis is going to be joining us on our Thursday. That's this week. You don't want to miss that. Crystal is going to be talking about the voice and talking about all great things of what we can do, not just with our voices, but the way in which we lead worship. So you don't want to miss that. Crystal, we've been talking already for the past uh, month and she's excited so you you want to make sure that you get there and so how do you get there good question you want to join our university program and i'm putting out the link right now so hold up we got time it's all right i know we're going through the house cleaning stuff and it's taking a minute but just chill it's all good so i'm putting that right now on our uh again we got facebook live and also on twitter so you got the links right now if you're watching the show live thanks again for joining us i see Teresa louise on facebook live thanks so much Teresa. how are you today so we are talking about joy and what does it mean for your worship team what does it mean for your church and when i say joy i said this earlier on snapchat this morning joy is not always the smiley face game show that we put on every sunday right because there are times that even though you could be going through the thick 
of the grief, of the muck. It could be joy that's still propelling you, even though maybe you don't feel like it. So that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today. And I can't think of another better awesome local worship leader guest than Gabe Zamet. Gabe comes from Heartland Community Church in Rockford, Illinois. He leads a worship ministry, church congregation the size of about 4,000. That's just pocket change, no big deal. He's also been leading worship for the past 14 years. And also, he is he's just received and, and just uh, accepted the position as head work worship pastor at his church. So that's a very, very awesome thing. So guys, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Gabe Zamet. Gabe, how are you today, my man? I'm doing good. Hope everyone else is doing good too. Yeah. Awesome, man. It's great to have you. How are you today? Uh, you know, I'm I'm doing great. We uh, I just got out of a programming meeting where we're talking about our weekend services and, um, you know, I'm, I'm just excited to carve out some time to talk about worship and especially when you talk about choosing joy. Uh, that's just a really important thing for worship leaders and and not just worship leaders, but people who serve or work at a church. Awesome. Well, thanks, Gabe, for being here. And, and guys, I just want to let's share a backstory about uh, Gabe. Gabe actually began following us about what a year ago was it? Maybe? You know, I've been following. I don't know if it, I, I could say like following in secret for a while, <laughs> but then I think we had our first conversation maybe about a year ago. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and talked about worship team training. And I'm a big fan of uh, just growth and development and training. Uh, so, yeah, about a year ago. Awesome. I like the way you said secret, but then another part of me wonders what that really means. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what that means either. OK, well, OK. How about we move on? Sure. <laughs> um, but no, but it's great to have Gabe. Gabe, actually, Gabe, uh, we met him over Periscope when we were doing these broadcasts yeah. about a year ago. Yeah. And Gabe was just, I mean, just gunning the comments, man. And I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. just high-fiving him. And it was just so much fun. Uh, so, Gabe, it's great to have you today. How about we jump Thanks. into you about what you do. Can you tell us about your church and also tell us about how you got started leading worship and and all that good yeah. stuff. So the so the church that I work at, Heartland Community Church, um, you know, we are we're about like you said, about four thousand is is our adult attendance on a weekend, and uh, we're non denominational. Uh, we've been around for about fifteen years. I've I've been here myself for about twelve, and uh, started out here serving. Um, I actually started, and I I feel like this is probably the case for a lot of. Um, young men who do worship is I started coming to church because I saw a girl that I thought was cute and uh, <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> which is not a good reason to what go kind to of church. church is this? But it got me there and then sh she left. Uh, but I stayed and um, you know, what's funny about that is um, even though the reason I came to church was not a good one, um, it got me in the doors yeah. and, and God did a work in me and I met some people who, um, put me on the path that, that, that has gotten me to where I'm at now. Hmm. So um, it's, it's just so interesting to think back on that. But yeah, so I started serving, um, just singing on the team and uh, didn't really see worship as, as something that I would want to do as a, as a career or as a, as a job. Um, and I still don't see it necessarily as a job, but so much as a calling. Um, but I uh, went volunteered and then I, I fell in love with with music and worship and and uh, went away to school, got my degree um, in uh, contemporary Christian, Christian music and worship arts. And uh, then I came back and interned here and I just kind of worked my way from an intern to part time mm -hmm. to then um, uh, full time. And I, I was an admin and just kind of learned a little bit of everything on my way to then being a worship leader and then student ministries worship director. Uh, and, and then just like you said, last summer, um, I was offered the position of the music director uh, here at our church and I accepted. And so I'm not even a year in, but uh, it's been a blast. And yeah. um, I, I, you know, what's cool about it and we could talk, we could talk as much or as, as little about it as you want, but um I'm only 30 years old, and so as a 30-year-old, to have had to really work my way through yeah. um, from an intern and, and do every, anything and everything. I mean, I, I ran cameras. I hmm. uh, produced weekend services, um, you know, setting stage and, and all, all sorts of things. Um, it's given me such a great appreciation for how many hands and uh, it, it takes to, to execute 
um, just from a logistical standpoint, a, a service at a church, especially yeah. a church this size. Yeah. I want to come back to that because you, you've mentioned a lot of good things that I think a lot of the other younger leaders want to hear more. Sure. Can you tell us also about your worship team? What does your worship team look like? That- yeah. Um, yeah. So our worship team is about um, for, our, for our weekend services, we're 50 to 60 is is uh, in our rotation. And we've always had a really strong um, belief that our worship team is is all volunteer, with the exception of myself and a couple other people who are on staff hmm. um, that rotate through as worship leaders. And what's really cool about that, and the thing that I love the most, is it's it gives you this picture of what the church can be at its best. And I mean, we all know what the church can be at its worst. Yeah. But but at its best, you see, um, you know, the CEO of a of a company playing keys next to. Um, someone who works as a barista at a, at a coffee shop, yeah. and it's it's amazing because they're doing it not because we're giving them money or notoriety, but they're doing it because they love Jesus and because they want the name of Jesus to be famous, mm-hmm. um, which is just really cool. And that's so that's a value that we hold really high. Yeah. Um, you know, other than that, stylistically, our, our worship is kind of what you hear a lot on the radio: Hillsong, um, Bethel, Jesus Culture, uh, Chris Tomlin, things like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, awesome. So, uh, tell us about like some or uh, what's up, uh, Jessica. She's awesome. Yes, Jessica says there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes, and I'm laughing at her. Matt Lockwood on Periscope, what's up? Matt knows about that because he he leads the church in uh, in the UK of about 400. Yeah. There's there's so many things that you talked about. What tell me? Um, tell us rather. What are some of the things that you've learned? in the past year that maybe you didn't know before you accepted this larger position? Oh my gosh. Well, I, <laughs> I've got to pick and choose because yeah. I, I don't know. We don't have that much time, but, uh, you know, I think the, one of the biggest things I've learned and I'm still learning is that, um, uh, you will never be, you'll never be there. You'll never be, you, you will never just arrive. Hmm. Um, I, I remember as a, as a, as a younger worship leader coming out of college, I, I came to the guy who was the music director here at, at this church at the time. And I said, basically ex- expecting, um, uh, you know, I want a job at the church. And I thought I've got this and this and this on my resume. I've, I've, I've earned, you know, and there's a sense of entitlement, which I couldn't see because, you know, as a, <laughs> that's a lot of times when you've got a blind spot, um, it's, it's a blind spot for a reason. You can't see it. Hmm. Um, but I was I was humbled and and um, and and worked uh, in in the sense that uh, this guy said you know you're not you're not as good as you think you are yet and I think that's part of the reason why shepherding is is so it lays heavy on my heart and why I think it's important to shepherd people but what I've learned from that is it's such an important thing to always be trying to be better um, to be a better musician to be a better um, pastor. Uh, you know, worship leader, there's so many tools in the worship leader tool belt hmm. and, and to, to continue to work, to get better at using those tools is so important because if you just sit back and just rely on, um, you know, what, you know, uh, instead of trying to learn more, I feel like you're really not honoring God with the gifts that he's given you. Um, so that's one of the biggest things I've learned is even though I'm, I'm now the music director, um, there's no, there's nothing wrong with, with me being able to say, I, I'm not sure, or I need to, I need to look into something or, um, you know, or if someone else on your team is better at something than you yeah. to, um, to lean into them and to say, can you help me with this? Um, there's a lot of power to, to, uh, a team and leadership to leaning into someone else and utilizing their strengths. Um, and that's how a team works. Hmm. That's, that's, I love that the the words of encouragement and and leaning into others, especially when um, you're you don't have all the answers. And I think that's a is right. a, a beauty that we don't have all the answers because it shows others that we are also moldable and we also need to learn and be teachable. And that sets yep. a great role model. How how what do you say? to those that are leading worship right now that maybe feel like, well, maybe it's the other way. Well, I, because I don't know this, my confidence is shot. Maybe because yeah. I feel inadequate, maybe not God's not called me to lead worship. What do you say about that? 
Yeah, that's good. Um, because I, I, I've totally been there. I've, I've been in the spot where it feels like, uh, you don't have someone who believes in you. Mm-hmm. Um, or you're, or you're just unsure, you know, maybe asking God is, is this really what you want me to be doing? Am I, am I, am I following the path that you have set for me? Uh, and so what I would say is, I think what pulled me through that is, is prayer. Um, and, and then intentionally seeking out um, mentors. So to, to find someone who does know more than me, um, and, and, and it could be, um, it, it might not even be related to, to worship, but I think to find someone who, who has wisdom and experience is so valuable, and I still do that. There's, there are people that I go to and say, um, you know, I, I feel like this is a good idea, but I'm not sure. What do you think? Mm-hmm. And, and that is, um, especially when you're struggling with and you're wrestling with, am I making the right decision for my life? Am I, am I really following God's call or am I, or is this a selfish thing? Um, there is, there, there's, it, it, it's just really important. I think to find someone to, to lean into and to say, um, you know, what do you think? Uh, what kind of wisdom can you impart in me? And, and then to pray, to pray, pray, pray. And, and then when you think you've, you know, you're done praying, maybe pray a little bit more. Hmm. Um, the one, the prayer I would always say over and over and over is, is God, um, make it so obvious to me, which way you want me to go that you will shut every other door uh, in my face if you have to. Mm -hmm. And, uh, there were times where that's, that's tough because when you're in the middle of something, you just have to trust that, that God's got you. And that's, Mm -hmm. Uh, that's a part of what makes the journey worth it too, is when you, yeah. when you make some progress and you look back, you can see how faithful God was because he is, you know, he's, he's too faithful to us for us to, to waste our faith. Like mm-hmm. he, he, he would never waste our faith mm-hmm. um, because he is so faithful to us. And that's something that has always stuck with me. Mm. Awesome. Thanks for that. And, and we, and we want to, uh, say thanks for you guys on Periscope. Thanks for the hearts. You guys are awesome. And the likes on, uh, Facebook Live. Thanks for that. Um, many people think that just because that you're at a larger church, things are better. They're more impressive. <laughs> and, and you're laughing because it's true. Uh, oh, okay. everything I looks, wish. everything looks great underneath the lights and the stage. Yeah. But there's a lot of worship leaders that feel like, well, I mean, you mentioned like Matt's laughing right now. Um, we have those in our mentoring program, and you mentioned mentoring that is so huge. Uh, mm-hmm. That's something that we offer here at Worship Team Training. Uh, and what we've come, come to know is that, you know, it doesn't matter if you're leading worship with just – you are the only worship leader, the only, like, you're the guitar player or the piano player, yeah. and you're it, versus leading a church at 4,000. So mm-hmm. can you tell us, you know, is there any difference into that? You know, I think there are, uh, there's advantages and disadvantages no matter where you go and what, what denomination, size. Um, and that's that's the thing is it, it almost makes me think of, like, uh, you know, more money, more problems. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, you, you can, you can, there are, there are definitely things that are, that are appealing, especially selfishly. You think, Oh, I, I'm leading worship in front of, you know, so many people and that, and, and that kind of does this thing with your ego where you feel good about, about what you're doing. And that's such a dangerous thing. Mm. Um, and that's the, the, the biggest pitfall is then you start thinking it's, it's me, it's what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. that is making this impactful or making this good or important. And uh, that's just not true. You know, we're, we're nothing without Jesus. We're nothing without the love of Jesus. And, and that's something that I always try to impart on our worship team. And so that's one of the big challenges is keeping people on the team focused on, because there are, there, there are lights and there's production value and things like that to say, um, you know, we do this every weekend, not so, uh, that we can feel good about ourselves or point people towards us, but so that we can po- point people towards Jesus and, and towards, um, you know, a life that's worth living. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's, that's a huge challenge. And, you know, I grew up, I actually grew up in a, in a um, you know, a, relative to where I'm at now, a smaller church. Um, so I, I've seen both sides. Uh, mm-hmm. And there are things that I, that I really love and I miss about that. Um, one of the things I miss is, 
that sometimes th- th- there's less drama. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and there's less, there's just less <laughs> to have to worry about. And, and, the, and with certain areas and there's more with other areas. And so it, it you know, it, it, it's such a misconception to think, um, you like, you know, to look at another church and to say, you've got it better or you've, or well, you wouldn't understand. Um, they're just different. Yeah. And, and that's, that's the cool thing about the church is there are so many different churches and that to me paints this beautiful picture of how, how we've been made. There are so many different types of people. And so it doesn't make sense for there to be just one church or one type of church for one type of person. Hmm. Um, that's, that's what makes the church so incredible. And I think the, the longevity of the church too, because that's how that's how we've been made and and there's so there now there's all these different types of churches on the on the church spectrum mm-hmm. you know small big medium um you know charismatic uh, more liturgical that's just the part of what makes it beautiful yeah so tell us what does it mean to be joyful if we can just shift gears for a moment what does it sure. mean to be joyful joy be being joyful, I, I actually I laughed when um, I was sent the the notes for this, and <laughs> I saw we we're going to teach on joy because um, I have given teachings on choosing joy. Awesome. Um, and it, being joyful is it's a choice. Yeah. Um, you know there is this. I, I think sometimes we look at joy, we hear people talking about joy, and you think, oh, I just, I'm just not feeling it. I'm not feeling, it. and that's and that's the biggest lie that, that you can be told is that joy is this thing that you feel. Um, I think happiness is a feeling and, and joy is, is a gift from God, but it's also a choice that we, that we have to choose to say, um, in the midst of, um, this great thing that I'm going through, a job promotion, uh, something with my family that's that, you know, maybe we just found out, you know, you're pregnant or, uh, you know, something great happens, um, in in your life. And it's so easy to choose joy there, but then you've got, uh, just the mire and the muck and and all the the bad things that that life can throw at you, and still to choose in the midst of this, I'm going to say, God, I choose joy. Hmm. I choose to um, to trust and rely on you. That's tough, and that's what joy is. It's, it's a discipline, mm-hmm. and it's saying I choose to to uh, be joyful regardless of my circumstances. Hmm. That's and that's tough. Yeah, that is. So how does that exhibit itself in leading worship and among your team? Yeah, in, in leading worship, especially for, for anyone who's leading or part of a team on a weekly basis, it can feel at times like you're going through the motions. And, um, and that's not a good feeling to have. Uh, and I'm sure anyone who, who's been doing it for a while can identify with that. And so I think choosing joy in the midst of that is to say, um, God, this is an offering. I'm not worshiping because I because it feels good. I'm I'm worshiping you because I'm I'm offering you my best because it's what you deserve. Mm. And so I'm I'm it's an outpour of, of my heart based on uh, what you've done for me, what you're doing, and what you will, will do for me. Mm-hmm. And so. How do you get your team to pull through or maybe other worship leaders to pull through that when they're in a time of maybe uh, it could be anything. Maybe um, before rehearsal, you had a team member that came to you and said, hey, um, this happened in my life and now I'm broken. And then yeah. you got to lead worship or maybe it could be something technical, something that didn't work out right. The sound system is going away, whatever that it could be. And it's deriding your joy. How do you as a worship leader work through those turbulences? Yeah, I think I think a lot of that does come from especially in, in the midst of your team, it's going to come from you, the, the whoever's leading that. Hmm. Um, th- for example, just a few weeks ago, you know, we had Easter. And, uh, and here at our church, we had a, an hour and a half before our first service on Easter. We had all of our lights go down. Our lighting system went oh, down. Wow. Um, you know, we had this huge uh, uh, opening number that we had been working on with, with lights and this, you know, thing on stage that was going to spin around. And it was really cool and and we put all this time and effort into it, and uh, that you, you can you can almost see kind of the air come out of the room a little bit as as we're going through our run through, and people are going, "Oh my gosh, this isn't gonna this isn't gonna happen now." And, and you can you can kind of get that sense of like, "Well, what do we do?" 
And so I gathered up our team and I said, um, you know, whether we've got our microphones working or the lights or whatever, we're here to worship God. And, and we don't need all that other stuff to make that happen. Hmm. So, um, I think, I think it starts, it starts with you. And, and again, going back to just that choice of, it would have been so easy for me to say, man, that this sucks. <laughs> and yeah. I don't know what to do. Um, and, and, but I chose in that, in that moment to say, uh, God, I'm going to, I'm going to trust that, that no matter what, um, people are going to be led into your presence today. Hmm. Uh, you know, whether things go the way we planned or not. And, um, so we gathered together and, uh, and we just refocused ourselves. And I think that's, that's the important thing is sometimes when you're experiencing that to t- take a step back and take a breath and then just kind of refocus and come back forward r- renewed and saying, um, all right, I'm ready to go. And I'm, and I'm, I'm ready to go because it's not about me. It's about, it's about him. Yeah, absolutely. I love that. Uh, so guys, you've heard it here from Gabe. Uh, you know, it, it really doesn't matter what capacity the church that God's called you to lead. That's the whole point though. God's called you to lead and you are to step into that. And we're told from scripture of what Jesus said. He sent us the Holy Spirit as our comfort and guide. He'll never leave us, never forsake us. Mm-hmm. And so Gabe, uh, it's been awesome just to hear your journey and how God's guided you through all the terrain that you've been through. And still, as you're at New Horizons right now, and the future is still unknown, but there you are just pressing on, man. So it's just awesome to see that. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for joining us today, Gabe. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Anytime. Yeah. Awesome. Guys, we're going to have Gabe come back at another session that we'll have on a Tuesday. And we just want to remind you that it, this is all about getting the help that you need in terms of what God is doing through you in your life. We have two ways that we can help. Um, I've given you the link right here to joining our university program that we have. And on that university program, you can choose from three different level memberships that we have and they're all to encourage you in your walk the content just like this crystal lewis that's going to come on thursday monthly webinars ebook devotionals and also ebook music we also have things in the store of other music help and videos workshops we're putting on there as well more and more content's being added daily and weekly uh plus the near 700 um the near 700 videos that we have right now. And Susan Fontaine Godwin, who says hello, what's up, Susan, who's on uh, Facebook Live, she too joined us a, a couple, three weeks ago. So you're going to have great teachers like this all the time. And at the same time, if you are in that position where you feel like, you know, I need to have that mentoring in my life of what Gabe was talking about, you can get the same thing right here at worshipteentraining.com slash mentoring or even at the university site because we take mentoring seriously. Guys like Gabe, myself, I mean, I've been through it as well. Susan, thanks so much for that sweet comment. She says, WT provides such amazing resources for worship teams. Thank you, Susan. Um, I know just like Gabe that, you know, when I started out leading worship, uh, just like Gabe here. I mean, I really didn't know much of what to do at all. It was just more like, God, you're going to have to do this for me. This is not about me. This is about you. But if I make it about me, it becomes less about you. And then I'm going to face all those mountains and I'm going to be uh, not have the ability to climb them. They're going to defeat me. Don't let that happen to you. If you're in your 20s, if you're in your 30s, if you're in your 40s or your 50s, God has not called you to quit. You see the living truth right here with Gabe and what he's been going through and many other worship leaders, female worship leaders, I'm talking to you because a lot of you ladies out there also are in that fight. Each of us are, no matter if you're working with a pastor, leadership that may be like a mountain to you or it could be something else that's going on in your life that seems to grab a hold of you. God, God not only, not only wants to free from that, but he wants to grow you from that. And if you look at all the stories in the Bible, you never see a victory where somebody ran apart from God and found that solution. It was always with God in the trenches. So if that's you, look, you're perfect right where you are, and God is right there with you to help, and this is where we come in as well. So we love you. Thanks so much for joining us today. Check us back at WTTU.co for the university. And also our workshops that are one-to-one that come to your church and our mentoring that walks beside you. Thanks, Sheila. Good to have you, Sheila Patterson, over uh, over the seas there. And we look forward to coming back next Tuesday. We're going to have a new local worship leader guest just like Gabe. Well, 
won't be just like Gabe. You'll be somebody else. Uh, but we're going to have a lot of fun. And also, Crystal Lewis coming up. We also have a webinar put on by Dwayne Moore at the end of this month. So you want to be sure to sign up. we got a lot of great things going. Don't forget the songwriting contest. If you got those songs that you just want to get out there, sign up today. You can find the, the links right there on Facebook Live and also on our Twitter feed. Gabe, thanks so much again for joining us, bro. It's been great to have you. Yeah, thank you. It's been awesome. Great, guys. And you were awesome. We look forward to having you back next Tuesday. May God's blessings flow always to you. We love you, and we'll see you very soon. Bye. This has been a Worship Team Training Broadcast and Digital Production with your host and training director, Brandon Dempsey. Worship Team Training provides live workshops and online resources to help inspire, create, and transform the leading of worship. We'll see you again right here on worshipteamtraining.com.